The buy action and sell action blocks in the execute trade section of our builder menu are fundamental for executing buy and sell operations within the strategy. These blocks are the heart of order execution, allowing us to specify crucial parameters such as lot size, take profit levels, and stop loss. Additionally, they offer advanced features that facilitate effective risk management for the strategy, helping to reduce potential risks. For this video, we will use the buy action block, but it is essential to understand that the sell action block also offers the same functionalities. Now, let's proceed to open the block to explore its features. The first thing we see at the top of the block is the choice of order type, instant execution, or pending order. Instant execution refers to the immediate opening of the trade after the block is activated. On the other hand, with pending orders, we refer to pending orders that will be placed on the chart based on user-defined parameters after the block is activated. We will address pending orders later. Now, let's focus on explaining the instant execution section. Here we customize the lot size, take profit, and stop loss of the trade. Starting with the first one, size type, it consists of four choices. The first one is fixed lots, meaning having a fixed lot size for each trade. The other three are in percentages relative to the account data, namely risk percent equity, risk percent balance, and risk percent free margin. So the lot sizes of the trades in this case will be dynamic. For example, if we want to select risk percent balance, we first need to have a stop loss. In this case, we can input 15 pips. When we select risk percent balance, for instance, by inputting 1%, the trade opened will have a lot size allowing for a loss of 1% of the balance in the 15 pips of stop loss. Considering an account with 1000 euro and a trade on the euro USD currency pair, the loss will be 10 euro. Consequently, the lot size will be 0.07. The same functionality will be applied for risk percent equity and risk percent free margin. Continuing, we find the section to customize the take profit of the trade. Here we have several options to choose from, such as fixed pips, percent from stop loss, and custom condition. The fixed pips mode allows selecting a fixed number of pips as take profit, while percent from stop loss represents the percentage of pips based on the stop loss that will be used as take profit. For example, if we set the value to 15% and the stop loss is 100 pips, the take profit will be 15 pips. Finally, we have the custom mode, which allows us to create a take profit based on custom conditions. Here, we can select from indicators, candles, market properties, objects, and values. For example, we can decide to set the take profit using an indicator like Bollinger Bands. Considering a buy position, we can choose to use the top of the Bollinger Bands as the indicator's result. This way, our take profit will be set at the top of the band. It's important to note that the take profit remains static as it is set at the time of activating the buy action block and is not dynamically updated. If you desire a dynamic take profit, we suggest referring to the video tutorial regarding Modify Tarde Block. Similarly to the Take Profit, the Stop Loss also offers the same functionalities, but it focuses on managing losses rather than profits. So in the Stop Loss section, we find the following options. Fixed Pips, to set a fixed number of pips for the Stop Loss. Percent from Take Profit, if we want to use the Take Profit as a reference to set the Stop Loss. Finally, the possibility to set a stop loss with custom conditions. For completeness, it's important to note that, although strongly discouraged, it's possible not to set either the take profit or the stop loss using the no take profit and no stop loss options. Under the stop loss, we find a checkbox regarding the trailing stop. If checked, this option allows activating the trailing stop found within the C Trader functionalities. This trailing stop converts the stop loss into a trailing stop and moves the stop at each pip dynamically following the best price. It's important to note that if the price moves against you, the stop loss will not be moved. Before moving on to advanced settings, we find another checkbox regarding the market range. 
The market range setting allows you to select the maximum deviation from the price you see on the platform where the order can be executed. When you set the market range, you have the option to choose between bid and ask and specify a number of pips. Bid refers to the price at which traders are willing to buy a financial asset. Ask refers to the price at which traders are willing to sell a financial asset. When you place an order in the market, there may be a difference between the price at which you want to execute the order and the current price in the market. This difference is called slippage. By setting a market range, you establish the maximum acceptable slippage that you are willing to tolerate for order execution. For example, if you set a market range of 10 pips with bid, it means that the order can be executed within a maximum deviation of 10 pips from the current purchase price bid in the market. Continuing the exploration of the block, we find the first advanced setting, Advanced Strategy Management. By clicking on this option, a screen opens where we can choose between the Martingale strategy and the grid strategy. In this video, we will not delve into these two strategies because there is a dedicated video entirely on their use in the Academy. If you are interested, we invite you to watch it. However, it's important to know that these two strategies allow, in different ways, to automatically increase the lot size of positions to manage risk better. Returning to the main screen of the block and selecting Create Advanced Protection, we find two additional configurations, one regarding the take profit and the other the stop loss. If we check the first option, we get the possibility to add multiple take profits to the position, with a maximum of four. In this case, we can choose the pip level of the take profit and the quantity of profit lots to scale into the position, which will result in a partial closure. For example, if we have a position with a take profit of 50 pips and 0.05 lots, we can input four levels of take profit, one every 10 pips, and achieve a profit of 0.01 lots at each take profit level. The rest of the position will be closed upon reaching the main take profit at 50 pips. It's important to note that when entering values as a percentage within the size type and take profit fields, the values of the take profit levels will be expressed as a percentage. If instead, we check the box, enable advanced stop loss, we find two options, break even and trailing stop. Regarding the break even, it positions the stop loss at a specific distance once a certain profit is reached. We find two selections, add, represents the number of pips added to the entry level of the position to move the stop loss level. Trigger when gaining. This is the profit level in pips that the position must reach for the break even mechanism to be activated. For example, if we enter values like 5 pips for add and 10 pips for trigger when gaining, when our position has gained 10 pips, the stop loss will be moved to a profit of 5 pips. The break even, once activated, remains fixed. Regarding the trailing stop, it moves the stop loss based on a step and stop value. We find two parameters. Step represents the value in pips that needs to be reached in terms of profit to activate the trailing stop. Stop, it's the value in pips indicating the distance from the step. For example, if we set the step value to 20 pips and the stop value to 10 pips, we are telling the strategy that when the trade reaches a profit of 20 pips, the stop loss will be moved to 10 pips below the step, ensuring a profit of 10 pips. If the trade reaches a profit of 40 pips, the stop loss will be moved to 30 pips of profit, and so on until the price continues to move in our favor. The trailing stop does not move backward. If the price falls, in this example, the position will be automatically closed, ensuring a profit of 30 pips. As in almost all blocks, here we also have the option to assign filters by clicking on Assign Filter. In this case, we can insert a filter for the symbol. Remember that the symbol name must exactly match what you find inside CTrader, as symbol names can vary from broker to broker. Additionally, we can add a comment that will be visible in the CTrader trade section. Now, let's see how pending orders work. If we select Pending Order, at the top of our block, a partially different screen opens. Here too, we have settings for lot size, take profit, 
stop loss, and see traders trailing stop. However, the advanced protection options found in instant execution are missing. These will be added in future updates to Algo Builder X. First of all, we need to choose the type of order we want to execute, having two options, limit order and stop order. For a buy position, limit order, you can place a buy order below the current market price. This means that you want to get a better price than the current one, so you aim to buy when the price reaches the level you specified or lower. Stop order. You can place a buy order above the current market price. In this case, you wait for the price to reach the level you specified or exceed it, indicating a possible upward trend. For sell trades, the logic is the same but the conditions are reversed compared to buy positions. Continuing, we find the open at price section in pending orders which determines the price at which you want the pending order to be activated. Here we can find ask, bid, mid, and custom. Choosing between these options allows you to precisely define when you want your pending order to be executed based on market behavior. While the price offset function in pending orders allows you to set a price offset from the activation price of the pending order. This offset is measured in pips. Imagine setting a pending order with an activation price of 1.3000 and a price offset of 10 pips. If the activation price is reached, the pending order will be executed but the execution price will be shifted by 10 pips from the activation price. If you have a buy order, the execution price will be 10 pips above the activation price, so the order will be executed at a price of 1.3010. If you have a sell order, the execution price will be 10 pips below the activation price, so the order will be executed at a price of 1.2990. This function is useful when you want to add a small safety margin to the activation price of the pending order. It can be used to account for variable spreads or other factors that may affect the actual execution price. The expiry function in pending orders allows you to set an expiration for the order. If you select specific time, you can decide how long the pending order will remain active by entering values in the boxes for days, hours, minutes, and seconds. For example, if you enter 1 in the days field, the order will be cancelled one day after being created. This function is useful for limiting the duration of pending orders, ensuring they do not remain active longer than desired. The examples of the buy and sell action blocks within a trading algorithm development environment like Algo Builder X are intuitive once the functioning of the block itself is understood. These examples are applicable based on the specific strategy you intend to implement. It is important to note that these blocks should be placed within the algorithm after defining the conditions, formulas, or other logical blocks that determine the opportune moment to execute the buy or sell order. Furthermore, it is useful to emphasize that these blocks can be used for resetting the variables used in the algorithm. By connecting the modify variable block to the true output of the buy or sell action block, you can reset the associated variables after the order is executed. In conclusion, the buy action and sell action blocks are fundamental for executing buy and sell operations within a trading strategy. They allow you to specify crucial parameters such as lot size, take profit levels, and stop loss, contributing to effective risk management. Additionally, they offer advanced features such as trailing stop and advanced strategy management. Understanding and correctly using these blocks is essential for creating effective trading algorithms.